I did some digging on the fact that the Bills have like four pennies in salary cap space remaining <laughs> after the Darrell Williams Matt Milano stuff. And I think there's some stuff in the CBA that Buffalo can exploit, but it's going to be like when you're really like you're broke and you're like returning cans to get gas money. That's kind of where we are. But in volume, like if you return a lot of cans, you can get a lot of money. Are you telling me that AJ Klein is a bag of cans? <laughs> Bag of used hockey pucks. I'm, I'm just kidding. I, I will rise above, above this. This hell I made this city haunted. Empty hope, set it aflame. Where the city was just built to burn down to the ground. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, it's okay. You can say your thing. No, it's the okay. intro. Nobody cares. I was going to say, Paul, that we, once again, we were wrong. You're not going to sign Milano and, and Williams. <laughs> in all fairness, in all fairness to hashtag, we have to have this disclaimer. Number one, we did not foresee the cap, the cap going down. Number two, you did earlier. I did. Yeah. Number two, um, you didn't expect other players to take pay cuts. Yeah. And that was a X factor that we did not take into account. We said if the so cap stayed where it was, you weren't going to sign those guys for what it was. Yeah. it's. I know it's good fan speak to be like, oh, we'll just sign them to a pay cut. But the player has to sign the pay cut. Like, yeah. this is, they're individual contractors. Like, they have to be willing to do it. So. And you had to lose Brown and Jefferson. Yeah, you had, yeah exactly. So, but, yeah. it's... Do you yeah. think letting those players go said, listen, we'll let you go or we can restructure? And do you think they offered them restructures first? Or do you think they just cut bait with Brown and, and Jefferson and said, oh, it's I, not going to work? It doesn't seem – you can't say that Bean's really good at, at talking to players and getting these, these certain deals and not say that they would have had at least had a conversation about yeah. it. Yeah. But I, I found it very interesting that they cut Jefferson, not Butler. Oh, I mean, where did Butler play? I mean, the devil you know, when, I, when the devil you don't. Butler, to me, Butler at times was the best defensive lineman on that team. He was. I'm just so, saying. I mean, I, 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 I like, like Quentin Jefferson speaking, a lot. I like, like Quentin Jefferson a lot. But I, you're going to take a chance. If you're a skeptic, yeah. you'd be like, whoa, you kept the Carolina guy? Which I found very interesting that ding, ding, ding. Addison, the year before, started to the late, and Butler were three guys that took pay cuts and were restructured, mm -hmm. and then you to sign another Carolina guy. Mm-hmm. Yep. And a Boston College linebacker. <laughs> we said they were going to add one. Didn't think it would be that one. Didn't think it was going to be a lot. <laughs> All right, so tell me what, what this – because you – Listen, Nation, let me just tell you something. If you're ever in any kind of fantasy league arrangement with this man, okay, and you have to give him a set of documents that he has to read through, make sure that you have a lawyer read them first. <laughs> Because he will exploit every loophole <laughs> that's in it. He's been for th four years, five years, exploiting loopholes in the fantasy football thing that we have. And it's hysterical. But continue. What did you find in the CBA? So there's a thing in the CBA that says if you sign a veteran and you Ooh. sign them to a specific dollar amount and you give them less than a certain bonus amount, that they count only as the salary of a second year player. So let me give you an example, right? Let's say you have a player who's a seven year veteran, okay? Base minimum salary for a seven year veteran is just a shade over $1 million. So if you sign them to a one year, $1 million deal and give them less than like $130,000 in incentives or bonuses, yeah. they only count against the salary cap as a second year player. So you get a credit. There's like, almost $300,000, $400,000, you don't have to count against your salary cap. So if I sign a seven-year player for a just seven year player for a million dollars, yeah, there's a lot of money. Uh, my cap number is only 600000 Yeah, right around there. Yeah, I, the veteran, wow. let, let me pull up the second-year salary, because this goes up every year, so it's it's sometimes a little challenging to track. Yeah. But there's some conditions to it. It has to be a one-year deal. It has to be less than a hundred. Thirty-two thousand dollars in bonuses, but you know, saving two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a player, 
that adds up when you've got no salary cap space. Yes. And it's a great way to fill the back end of your roster because it's just like drafting players. Right? Yeah, it's, and it's effectively what you're doing. It's the other end of the spectrum because most right. of the players fall within, you know, they have three, four year deals and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. You have the veterans, you have the rookies. Mm-hmm. Now, in order to offset everyone just trying to clamor for draft picks, which is the cheapest option, right? they put this in the CBA so mm-hmm. veterans can also get signed as well. Exactly. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. So the way that it works is if you sign a seven year veteran, and it, anything over seven years is a million dollars. So it's like a million point zero seven five. Gotcha. So basically a $1.1 million or a $1.2 million deal. If you sign a veteran to one year, $1.2 million deal, is that right? He's free. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he's only going to count uh, 800, 8, 1.1, 132. Yeah, 1.1. Um, he's only going to count $850,000 against the cap. So you're saving 200 plus thousand dollars per player. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot. No, it doesn't. But you do that five times. And there's a million dollars. It's it's all money that against the cap, there's no there's no bad cap savings, right? Mm-hmm. And if you're looking at a at an off season where there's going to be a huge disparity, right? The free agency period, the elites are going to still get big money. There might be shorter term deals. There yes. there might be less guaranteed money, but the elite players are still going to get elite player money. Everybody else is going to be trudging for veteran minimum. I right? see so many one year. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of one-year deals and then team options on two-year deals. Like, just tread yeah. water for right now because the cap will go up next year because everyone will be back in the stadiums. Like, every, right. That's why I think everyone's going to think. Yeah, no, I and I'm 100% in agreement of that. But in here, you can't expect being not to take advantage of the circumstances or situations, right? This is a perfect opportunity. The rule is there. If you sign a player to a $1.1 million deal, they're not gonna. They're only gonna count eight hundred fifty thousand dollars against the cap to fill out the back end of your roster. Why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, and there's why a lot. There's it? a lot of teams that have forty five, fifty two players that mm-hmm. are gonna need that. My mm-hmm. question is this: Does that grow exponentially with the years? What do you mean? Two years, two point two. Does no, that it's work? one year. It's gotta be a one year deal. It's only. A, it can it's only, only be one year. year. Deal. Oh, okay. If I'm not just singularly signing him to a one point one, not exactly one point one. Mm-hmm. If I sign him to a four million dollar deal. Do I get a discount on the no. four million toward the cap? No, okay. no, no. It's only it's got to be one point one. That's it. That's that's the ceiling. One point one's the ceiling. Gotcha. You go above one point one, you're not getting any credit, right? Hmm. But that's why those are players who aren't going to sign at the beginning of free agency. We're talking about guys who sign, you know, May. week three, week four, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, of free agency because where they're looking for jobs, and Buffalo can benefit from that. And that's and and those are the types of players that I think are going to be most attracted to Buffalo because they're going to say, listen, I'm not really going to get much more money elsewhere. So let me go here. Well, you're still unemployed by week three. Well, isn't it, isn't there something to be said for reestablishing value on a winning football team? Guys, guys don't go to reestablish value in in New York with the Jets. You don't go reestablish value with the Jets. Sometimes you're willing to bet on yourself and Buffalo is an ideal location to bet on yourself. But this year, there's going to be more of those veteran minimum contracts for guys yeah. than I think ever before. I, I will. I don't think we'll ever have seen as many veteran minimum contracts. And Buffalo would be wise with as little space as they have to take advantage of that. You left some one thing out that I need. I think you need to bestow upon your mention. Yeah, yeah. What? Why would they? Why would they sign guys starting week three and week four? Because if a guy's on your roster at the start of the season. Oh, week one. Oh, you mean after the season started? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so vested veterans. So those are players with more than four years of NFL accrued NFL seasons. And if you're ever curious, Mike Tolbert's (laughs) an ideal example. Um, Jerome Felton is another one. Jerome Felton. Um, That's who it was. It wasn't Jerome Felton. It was Jerome Felton. Um, So if if you're ever curious, because sometimes players like Dane Jackson has – no. Well, he has an accrued season now, but that's because he spent basically the season on the practice squad. But if you're ever curious how many uh, accrued seasons a player has, you can go to overthecap.com. Yes. They have it listed. Spot Track has it too. Love it. Uh, because those accrued seasons determine what their what their base minimum salary is going to be. A vested veteran, a player with four years or more, once they're on a roster effective week one, their salary becomes guaranteed. Yes. So if they're cut, they still get paid their full salary. Yes. So teams will circumvent that. Bills did it. Bills did it before with Jerome Felton. Yep. They cut him 
for Glenn Gronkowski for one week. Yep. We all saw what that looked like. And then they brought Felton right back. And the reason, part of the reason was it bypassed Felton's salary being guaranteed. It, yeah. saved, it saved the Bills some money. That's why Paul was saying week three, week four, week three, and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. because those little things, mm -hmm. the, just the littlest things, mm -hmm. if you don't have a salary as guaranteed on your, on your roster, mm -hmm. then you're free to move that player any, any time right. without taking a hit. Right. Yeah, exactly. Especially if you're looking at these veteran minimum contracts where you can only give them a hundred and thirty thousand dollar bonus. Yeah, they're not going to cost you anything anyway. No, they're, they're basically free to cut. They're, yeah. they're basically free to cut because I'm, that that bonus money you'd have to take as dead cap, but it's a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Who cares? I'm willing for any NFL team that's watching this. Um, I can take the veteran minimum if you like. Yeah, I'm totally fine. I've with been that. talking about football for at least four years, so I'm a yep. vested veteran man. Vested, a vested, a vested hobbyist. Vested hobbyist. <laughs> <laughs>